there. Once again, you're back here with old Barry on the north coast of the Dominican Republic. Uh, really glad to see a lot of things have opened up uh, back to normal during the day. There's just a uh, curfew uh, in terms of uh, closings in the evening at, uh, I believe it's 8 o'clock now. And um, one other thing uh, is the restaurants. Uh, in another week and a half, will be allowed to serve uh, indoors again and, and serve on premises. Right now, it's only uh, takeaway. Other than that, things are really getting back to normal around this part of the country. Listen, uh, a quick thanks goes out to a friend of mine named Cy, um, who sent me this video. It does a pretty decent job of uh, describing where you're seeing this orchestrated violence. I'm going to include also another thing that came over from old Marty Armstrong about they traced it down that a large part of these bricks that were being used to throw through windows and car windows and cause all this destruction were actually there waiting for people. I think some of my viewers knew that already, but Berkshire Hathaway looks like they've been buying them, uh, which is uh, Warren Buffett. <laughs> anyway, it just gets deeper and deeper. Uh, my God, you better wear your hip waders because this caca is getting deep, but it, it's getting ridiculous. But anyway, he does a, a fairly decent job of describing it. The same people like Rockefellers, uh, not so much Soros back then, but again, I brought that to your attention about these same people. They were also the ones behind Women's Lib. The Rockefellers funded that almost exclusively. And please don't tell me they care about equal rights. It was all about taxation of the 50% of the population that is and wasn't paying taxes because they weren't working. It was a way of getting them to work and make them want to go to work that way. And I'm not saying it was good or bad. I'm not going back that way. Of course, everyone should be equal. That's the whole idea. I'm a big proponent on that. However, have a listen, okay? But then take what this basic concept is, which is a top-down pyramid, and start thinking about pyramids within pyramids. And you'll get a better idea of what's really going on, okay, in terms at least of the violence part of it. We'll pick it up on the other side, though. This is, all, we're gonna, this is, this is basically how things have been explained to me. So right here, you have uh, MSNBC, CNN, ABC. This one's going to be Fox. I'm just going to put that guy on the side. It's a, it says highlighter, not Hitler. Calm down, everybody. <laughs> and uh, here you have Black Lives Matter. So... Who, is, who owns Black Lives Matter? Who invests in Black Lives Matter? Well, the Clinton Foundation. Who else? George Soros. And this is Antifa. So now you have an event. The major news networks have to cover the event. An African American man is killed by police. It doesn't matter that he's a felon. It doesn't matter that he put a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach and did five years. It doesn't matter that he was in jail for cocaine. It doesn't matter that at the time of his arrest, he was on methamphetamine and fentanyl and was positive for COVID-19. Let's just throw all that out. That doesn't matter. Okay? Unjustly murdered by a police officer. So, the call comes down the pipeline. We got we to gotta organize. So, Black Lives Matter organizes all these peaceful protests, right? And they're all protesting, and they're fucking outraged, justifiably. But what else do you have? We have Antifa, who's paid for by George Soros. These are highly trained professional rioters and escalators. So they move in and disperse throughout all the different riots, right? And then the Clinton Foundation pumps money into promoting this stuff on social media and pushing the movement. And so the networks all scramble because they're, they're filming the social unrest. As these people are protesting, these professional rioters and looters start setting fires. They burn cop cars. They set up brick pallets. They destroy public property. And they stay in the shadows and hide behind and make it look like Black Lives Matter and African American culture as a movement is unruly, violent, and insane. The media then fucking films all of this shit, and this is all you see in your entire feed. But George Soros and Ted Turner and fucking Turner Broadcasting and the Rockefellers and what the fucking list goes on, the Rothschilds, they own most of these media companies. And the media companies are making billions of dollars by advertising because everyone's transfixed to the news and everyone's talking about it. So what happens is, is that the same people 
who instigate the event and organize the protest and escalate the protest make money off the African American community's outrage and further deplete the morality of the United States. Additionally, while all this is going on, Hillary Clinton and her buddies are all on trial. And they don't want this shit on the news. So this is a huge gaslight and people are not paying attention to what's going on. Now why would they want to do all this? Because they're afraid, first of all, that she doesn't get her appeal and she has to testify. She might be found guilty in a court and then be found, be found guilty of treason, which would mean she would either get jail time or she would be sentenced to death for, for being a traitor to America. The, the DNC is not going to be, be looked in a very good light in an upcoming election if that's the case. Uh, these people, right, the same people, these companies, all the same six big families, they're the ones who make money off outsourcing all of our products and every all of these services that we do to China. Okay, Donald Trump puts tariffs on everything that comes in from China so that they have to pay a tax to America so that we can rebuild our economy, which takes money away from these families. They desperately don't want Donald Trump to stay in office because they don't want people from the DNC to be prosecuted and go to jail for treason, and they don't want to fucking pay the tariffs to China. And they don't want to build the American democracy because these people are, they're sick. They want to have control. And they've been getting away with this gaslighting situation on the American people for so many years. They feel entitled to it. And there's a huge fucking problem going on where we have turned into this, po this uh, citizens policing other citizens over a, a, a veil of racism that doesn't exist. I'm, I'm African American, I'm 30 years old, I've grown up in this country, and I have not experienced actual racism. I have spent 20 years traveling through 48 states, and uh, how many countries? I don't know, let's say 50 countries all over the world. Uh, we don't have a problem with race here. And it's all manufactured, and yes, there is systemic racism, but the systematic racism is put in place by people like this. People, George Soros made his money by selling Jews to the Nazi party, by ratting people out. That's how he made his thing. Okay, Hillary Clinton is friends with David Duke, who, who's the head of the KKK. The Democratic Party is the party that lost the Civil War. The Democrats wanted to keep slavery. That's what people don't understand. In 1856, the Democrats started the KKK. And I don't understand why we've erased this from the history books. And you can literally just look this up on Google. It's, it's just facts, just do your own research. So before you get upset, before you start to look at what's going on, before you are told the problem in America, just ask yourself what your own personal reality is. Are you racist? Do you really think you're racist? Do you really see a problem here? You see a, a video on YouTube, you see this, you don't, you don't know the statistics. You don't know that 95% of African American men who are killed are killed by other African American men. Black Lives Matter isn't there because it doesn't serve this fucking system. It's a political system and they're using African Americans and African American pain and tragedy as a political shield to get their agendas done. And we have to stop this. So. Um. Well, welcome back, but you see, it, it doesn't go into any great detail, but yet it is fairly accurate. And for the average person, that's all you really need to know. There is a problem with information overload. A lot of people I know have it, uh, although a lot of it's useless babble. But anyway, each to their own. That's basically all the average person needs to understand. And you'll find out also with uh, the Yellow Jackets in France, which now is all over the world, but it basically started over in Europe. You'll find out Soros was behind all of that. I'm going to include a clip here from uh, Marty Armstrong about how it looks more and more like the people supplying these bricks that were waiting on pallets for these areas that were hit strong with the violence where you'd see YouTubes about bricks were waiting there for, for the rioters. It looks like Berkshire Hathaway might be responsible for buying those bricks and placing them there. Warren Buffett. You see, these names are going to come up constantly. I have brought to everyone's attention about Women's Lib and the Rockefellers almost solely funded that. Go back to World War II and you talk about how many... Jeez. 
hundreds of thousands of deaths, millions of deaths around the world. But yet, if you really want to be unbiased and do your research, you lift up any hood on any German vehicle and you're going to find a Ford motor in it. And if you doubt me, just go on the internet and just talk, look at, key it up, Ford motors and German war vehicles. Henry Ford was supplying all the motors for the German machines, okay? Take a look at the Luftwaffe, which was their Air Force back in World War II, and you're going to find out standard oil was supplying the aviation fuel to the Luftwaffe. Why? Because they had a big problem with one of their engines in their planes that would score pistons because their fuel blenders were not doing something that the only fuel they would run reliable on came out of America. They worked to deal with of all people, standard oil out of America. So please, you know, try not to get and tell me about this patriotic stuff, you know. It's sad when anybody dies for any kind of misrepresentation, World War II, or these people in the streets right now that are dying. Uh, while not yet in great numbers, I hope it never gets to that. But if it's a trick purpose, it's it's... While you feel sorry about anybody losing their life, it's very difficult to feel sorry about them doing so because it was their own ignorance that did it. So, you know, like I always say, the same names keep falling in place. That's why we're moving on. This is just something I think you would, might want to show people that maybe aren't as acute as you are about it, but without kind of asking them to drink from a fire hose where it's like too much information ah okay from that aspect you may get people to listen to that and take a step forward again i'm only pounding this pathway because we have researched it for so long and short of a bitter revolution between both sides that are different cheeks off the same ass okay Regardless of where you're looking at, the same sources are starting all the mischief, funding the mischief, and coming to us with means of resolving all these problems. The same people that are creating them. Now, I know a lot of my subscribers understand that. The people that they're having trouble getting through. So I'm only saying our only weapon. There is no other choice. You tell me what it is. There's no other choice. If we do not band together and put differences aside that were caused by the same people creating all this mischief and trying to control you, what chance do we have? We're only fighting ourselves. And that's why I'm so adamant about staying on this line of information. It's getting so redundant forwarding the same things about this staged virus or this political thing or the Russia gate or this or that. Now there's very liable to be a very serious altercation in the not too distant future with China. I mean, the West is running out of enemies to pick a fight with. And if the average, I would say level-minded person can't see where this is heading by now. Well, I guess you, you can only throw so many life preservers. So I'm going with the track that the only way we stand a chance of being successful, and we do have such a great opportunity of doing it, is to band together, stop differences, be it color, sexual preference, religious belief, and understand all of it's a shadow. And the real perpetrators are behind the curtain. If we can't understand that, we're heading down a very foreboding path. If, on the other hand, we do somehow begin to understand this, then humanity will be on its way to a miraculous future that we could have only dreamed of, the technology that's been kept from us to date. Anyway, it is the only answer. If anybody thinks of any other way of beating these folks other than you want to stop the problems about the TSA, nobody fly. Watch within a week what happens, okay? You don't want this, vote with your feet. And watch how they will listen to you because you are the power. Don't ever forget that. I know my subscribers understand it, but it's very difficult to get people who are embedded in fear mode to understand that because your brain locks. It's like a walnut and it's protecting what's inside. It will not be open for nothing. 
because it fears if it gets opened, it gets ruined. Okay, it gets destroyed, and it's it's going to be tough. But keep at it. Appreciate everybody getting this information out. We'll keep bringing it towards you. Once again, thanks. I appreciate the heads up on the video. This is Barry and DR. We'll talk to you guys soon.